Hi everybody, I'm Alexis Renee and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, happy spring. April is officially National Garden Month, which I found out a couple days ago. And to celebrate, I have been touring different gardens in the Washington DC area. They're open all day, almost every day. They're just there for you to enjoy, they're free. Um, they're accessible for people with physical disabilities, for people who have strollers and young children. Um, they're just a really uh, beautiful community space to reflect the natural landscapes that are found across the country. If you live in the DMV or are planning a visit soon, I really encourage you to check some of these different gardens out. If you don't live in this area, definitely stay for the vibes. And I encourage you, you know, hopefully my garden adventure will inspire you to check out a lot of nature spaces and garden spots in your town. The U.S. Botanic Garden is close to the U.S. Capitol building. And this garden was created in 1820. On their website, the U.S. Botanic Garden website, they said it is the oldest continuously operating public garden in the United States. It's a great place to uh, not only learn more and appreciate plants, but what they do for our world and how we can support them, but it's also a great place to relax and appreciate the ambience of the natural setting. Inside the building that houses the National Portrait Gallery and the Smithsonian American Art Museum rests the Kogood Courtyard, probably one of my favorite, if not the favorite space to relax and hang out in Washington, D.C. You don't expect it. It's unexpected to walk into the Kogood Courtyard um, inside of such a traditional looking museum and to just find such a gorgeous, sprawling, natural scene. When you walk over to the different plants, you can, you can really get a sense of, uh, uh, to appreciate how much work goes into maintaining all of these different um, flowers and other plant species. It, it's a variety of um, tropical plants, but in addition to that, they have different potted plants that are seasonal, that um, they move into garden containers for certain parts of the season and then move them to other parts of the museum later on throughout the year. So when, the, when I went, there were a bunch of tulips and daffodils to help welcome the spring season. The National Gallery of Art is huge. <laughs> when you find out that there is an entire sculpture garden dedicated to combining art and nature, you, you might be mind blown. It, it's breathtaking. They have a cafe, they do sculpture tours during the week, they have self-guided tours for you to enjoy. It's just a really nice space where you can appreciate contemporary art and then just also the natural setting. The next garden that I visited was the Enid A. Hop Garden. This garden is located uh, behind the Smithsonian Castle. So when you walk into the Enid A. Hop Garden from the Renwick gates, the first thing that you see is the parterre. This part of the Enid Ahop garden was designed in a Victorian style to reflect the era that the Smithsonian castle is from, which is pretty cool. Also in the garden, you can find the National Museum of African Art and the National Museum of Asian Art. Next to the National Museum of African Art, you can find a fountain garden. Now, when I visited, it, again, it's the spring is just starting, so I'm sure they haven't like fully turned on a lot of the water features in the area yet. So the, the water at the fountain garden was not on yet. Um, I will be back to visit it soon to see the, the full um, effect of like the bubbling brook in this area. But I learned that the fountain garden is supposed to reflect the Moors Court of Lions in the Alhambra Palace, which is in Spain. The Smithsonian National Museum of African Art took influence from this uh, court in designing the Fountain Garden uh, to, to bring the experience of exploring African art from inside the museum into the garden space. 
on the opposite side of the garden, the Enid Ahop garden, um, is the Moongate garden <laughs> section. This garden is close to the National Museum of Asian Art. And again, the way that this garden was designed, they include um, natural elements like different types of granite and stone. Uh, they include water and other components to reflect the temple of heaven in Beijing, China. I really, I appreciate the museum and the designer's dedication to carrying through um, the, the cultural aesthetics, the style, the architecture, the design, the, the, the art forms that can be found within the Asian Art Museum and the African Art Museum into these two natural spaces. Um, they create culturally infused uh, resting spots for visitors. The Smithsonian Pollinator Garden. This garden is like a walkthrough trail. It's located next to the Natural History Museum. People can learn more about the importance of pollination, how it works, some of the different creatures that are involved, and just some background information on those uh, creatures. I was so delighted to know that insects around the National Mall have a nice resting spot to visit. It's, it's a little haven designed for them. All of the plant life inside, all the trees, the flowers, the grasses and bushes were selected for their special qualities to nourish and protect pollinating insects. What I like about this exhibit is it brings us into the natural world of pollination. It brings us to their level and it also brings them up to ours. The Mary Livingston Ripley Garden. This garden is very close to the Hirshhorn Museum. Mary Livingston Ripley, Mrs. S. Dylan Ripley, was the wife of the eighth Smithsonian secretary. Mrs. Ripley decided that instead of a parking lot, what she envisioned this space to be was a fragrant garden for visitors to enjoy. And she advocated for this vision. She spoke to uh, the women's committee that she helped found. And yeah, in 1978, her, her plans came true. She was able to create this gorgeous secret garden space uh, next to the Hirshhorn Museum. Once you walk inside, at least for me, I was hit by a wave of just really nice scents, these gorgeous, just aromatic scents walking through the garden space. By raising up the flower beds to eye level, you get a really close look and um, close opportunity to just really take in all of the natural scents that the flowers have. Um, they place a lot of benches close to all of this blooming plant life. So when you sit down, you're just surrounded by all of these gorgeous colors and scents. I really, I just, I appreciate the passion that she poured into completing this project. Now this garden is still standing today and carries her name, it carries her legacy. I'm Alexis Rene, and thank you so much for watching today's video. I really love touring all these different DC garden spots. Uh, some of these gardens were definitely secret gardens that I did not know about before. Others, I uncovered more about them and they became that much more precious to me. I hope you enjoyed learning more about these historic and just uh, really powerful natural spaces in the DMV. I encourage you to visit these gardens and others in your area. Don't forget to share the adventure and I will see you next time.